What's going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? We saw episode two of The Last of Us. Now it is time to watch from our friend Paul over at Heavy Spoilers. Go check out his channel because he is killing it. He's become The Last of Us channel. His breakdown and Easter eggs for The Last of Us episode dose. Join with me is the man who I'm covering The Last of Us with, Andrew Gordon, Agor711, who you can tell has been hit with a cordyceps infection with his red eye yep. <laughs> today. I, I am infected. You should stay away from me, Greg. No, no, no. I got a special kind of blood. You're, uh, I, you're, you're immune, huh? That's the word I was looking for. I was trying to add to the improv here. It just wasn't doing it for me. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead, leave a like. That'd be very much appreciated. Also, uh, you can go check out our reaction for the second episode, The Last of Us, that is up here on this channel. John and Tara, the non-gamer reaction. That'll be up mañana. That is tomorrow in Spanish in honor of Gabriel Luna and Pedro Pascal. Now, uh, let's move on to this reaction. <laughs> Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, aka Not Your Average Joel, and this video we're breaking down The Last of Us Episode 2. Oh, that's the series has had two really good episodes back to back, and as a big fan of the game, I've loved watching these first two entries. They do change some things up though, and throughout the video, we're going to be going over the Easter eggs, game differences, and also giving our thoughts on the series so far. Huge thank you to everyone who watched our video last week. I love that. <laughs> I've said that to you so many times. Easter eggs until the end so that people who haven't played the game can enjoy the twists and turns that come up in the show. I'll give you a heads up before we hit that and we start the episode off in Jakarta all the way back in 2003. If you cast your mind back to last week then you may remember that they did an announcement over the radio that talked about the city and how something strange was going on there. Yes, Here I we remember. see it playing out with the outbreak of the infection being studied by a doctor. This wasn't in the game, and I like how the series is slowly filling in the backstory of the virus. Yes, Both yes. the beginning of the last episode and this one had completely new bits in them, and it's possible that we might even get a story slotted in at the opening of each entry that gives us way more details on the infection than what we ever got in the game. Now, in the game, if I'm not mistaken, we don't really know the full extent of how this virus came to be, right? So it seems like Neil Druckmann, in a conjunction with Craig, I want to say Mazin, <laughs> Mazin uh, is working together to actually deliver for us what the backstory of the virus truly is and how it all came to be. Yeah, from what I remember, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I think there was some newspaper clippings in the video game that said like it originated out of South America and Mexico or something like that. Yeah. And so there wasn't too much context there, but we kind of talked about this too, uh, that I I love, you know, in the first two episodes, how they have these prologues here that kind of just, again, explain this. And they're done really methodically and really interesting. And again, just give a really good explanation, the backstory to how the cordyceps brain infection just started and originated. So, so I love what they're doing. These first two episodes just filling in the gaps of how it all started. Now, when the title card's first shown, we can see this is taking place on September 24th, 2003, dating it two days before the outbreak. Joel's this, birthday. of course, shows how fast the virus spread. And in the game, we learn it was through products containing flour and yeast, which we'll talk more about in just a bit. Huge shout outs to Dynamic Smurf on our last video for pointing out that 2003 was potentially chosen because it was one of the hottest years on record, yep. with a record oh, wow. breaking heat wave happening that killed 20,000 people. The subtitles Whoa. used throughout this part of the show also highly resemble the captions from the game, immersing us more in the Last of Us world. That's a good catch. We start off with a sunny, seemingly normal day in Indonesia, which is when the military arrive and summon the scientists to a lab. Though the world is stabilized, the Last of Us storyline is filled with different militant factions throughout that all try to seize power to impose their rule. Fedra were of course a big part of these, and I love how in the backdrop there's always the idea of us versus them. Us or them. This is echoed in Abu, who's pretty fearful that she's been taken in. She suspects they think she's committed a crime, but they want her because she's a professor in mycology. Mycology is the study of fungi, and she's the top scientist in the country <laughs> after having graduated from the University of Indonesia. Abu is escorted past a reception desk, and this actually leaked online when the show was in production. She walks past several vaccine advertisements as well, and these are all riffing on the We Can Do It poster. Oh. We once more get it hammered home that there's no cure, and this is why Ellie is such a paramount person in the story. Now, Abu Ratna then examines the specimen, and she's taken to one of the infected that, that we can't show, can't show it. Trust bloody HBO to have a fully nude woman. They can't bloody help themselves. <laughs> and the woman has a bullet hole in her head, and she clearly only stopped once she was shot. Around her foot we see a bite mark, and upon being opened up, this spreads out like the ones from Mrs. Adler's mouth last week. Yeah, still so gross. Still so gross. A really creepy dimension to the entire thing. 
Now, I didn't want to bring up the clickers last week, as it could have spoiled some stuff for people who didn't want to know, but we finally get to meet some in this episode. They so don't disappoint good. either, and through their biology, we can see how the cordyceps work. They basically infect a person, and then they <laughs> spread through their body, slowly replacing their cells with fungi, so they very much become almost like a living mushroom. Yeah, My man that's awesome. A stool from Mario, he ain't got <laughs> shit on these, and the fungus eventually completely devours their brain and the upper part of their head. This makes them blind, and it's why the clickers are called that, because they use echolocation in order to see their surroundings. Right, right. In the hotel, Joel brings up how the majority of the infected die quite quickly, but those that are sustained go on living for decades. This is very much the case in the clickers, with them being infected that have been around for decades, and thus the fungus have managed to take over most of their body and transform them into these monsters. While the, the showmaster do two things, make it harder to kill the clickers, also somehow you survive longer when fighting the clickers in the show, because unless you got like a shiv ready to go, yeah. you will die right away. Yeah, it's no. such a pain in the ass in for, the game. For sure. And you made, you made a great point. When you're the player, you're in control, and then when you're watching these characters, there's such more tension. Again, they just had did a great job of capturing like, wow, the clickers are so much tougher to kill, and... <laughs> Like, you really feel a sense of danger for our main characters. I love the look of the clickers on the show, too. And the body movements, they just really nailed it in that in episode, too. I love the way that the cordyceps are located in the mouth here, and it hints at them slowly taking over the inside, but we can't tell until the infection is further down the line. Ibu Ratna has a cup of tea, and she learns that things started a flour and grain factory. Now, the reason why I think Jakarta was chosen is because it actually has the biggest flour mill in the entire uh -huh. world. The Bogasari flour mill ranks as the largest on the planet in terms of size and scale. What and research. Is Damn, that is some real research. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, she refers to it as being the perfect substrate, and in biology, this is a term used to describe the surface in which fungus lives. Cheers, uh. Google. Enzymes can also be found here that cause chemical processes, and this may be how the virus mutated to infect humans. Now, when it comes to how the fungus spread, the game mentions how it got into food, and a flour and yeast factory would be the perfect place for this to happen. When we look back at episode 1, there was actually a lot of food that would contain this ingredient that the characters in the show actually managed to avoid. We had moments where the younger Mrs. Adler made some cookies and flour yes. because they had raisins in them. I think we'd make some cookies. Chocolate chip? Raisin. Ugh. Yeah, no, you don't need Mr. Those. Adler could also be seen feeding the elderly Mrs. Adler and this could be where the infection started out at. That is crazy. Also said, but I'm on Atkins. What now? Which, in case you don't know, is a low-carb diet, yeah. meaning that things that have a lot of flour and yeast in are completely avoided. You know, I realized if Joel were to ever turn, if he were to ever feed on human flesh, he would still technically probably be on the Atkins diet still. <laughs> <laughs> probably, but yeah, no, that was clever. I, li I like that too, because we saw in that first episode, he forgot the cake, they avoided, uh, she avoided the cookies, Tommy didn't have the pancakes, so, and all things yeah. had a flower in it. So, by the way, I can't stop seeing Thandie Newton anymore now that we know that that's her daughter. I believe the correct... Did I say it wrong? Pronunciation is Tandy. Oh, okay. What well, I'd just say Mission Impossible 2 chick. How's that? Is that good? Does that work for you? Yes. Okay. That everyone's is the best fa one. everyone's favorite Mission Impossible <laughs> film. Out. Thank you, John Woo. Now in the morning, Tommy was gutted that they weren't having pancakes mm. because Joel and Sarah had bacon and eggs. Again, they're avoiding flour <laughs> products, and they uh -huh. also didn't even have a birthday cake either. So the entire day was them just dodging bullets. There is a lot of <laughs> emphasis on the food. No, yeah. I don't know if Joel would have completely slipped. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, I don't know if Joel would have completely skipped. I'm sorry. Now, I don't know if Joel would have completely <laughs> skipped out on bread when food was sparse, but hey, at least they kept that consistent. He says the woman bit three other co-workers and that they were all executed, but that they don't know who bit her, and thus the virus is still out there. Fourteen other workers are missing as well, and there's not really any way to put a lid on this. Even if they lock down the country, the cordyceps have mutated now, and it's only so long before someone stumbles into them when they're out in the wild. Oh. She says that the whole city has to be destroyed, and we see how this strategy was adopted worldwide due to the craters later on. In the game, I, I always just assumed they were collapsed part of the streets due to the lack of maintenance, but you should never assume because it makes a... Ah, so you, you and me. me. Anyway, there's no hope, and she wants to spend the remaining hours that she has left with her family. It's a really bleak way to intro the episode, and we know that the following 20 years were likely hell on Earth due to how far the virus spread. It turned the infected against everyone around them, and even her going back to her family is something that she'll likely not experience again. Mm. Now, Ellie yeah, very much yeah. represents the hope for a cure, 
and this is shown symbolically with her sleeping under a literal ray of light that shines down on her. Joel and Tess sit in the dark, <laughs> I love where she's shot. pointed, almost like it's a painting of Jesus or something. A butterfly flies over her, and imagery of these have appeared throughout the series so far. Oh, interesting. The butterflies actually carry their own meaning, and typically they're used to represent rebirth, transformation, and a change in a positive direction. <laughs> Ali, of course, could be this, and she has the potential to cure humanity. Oh, I love that touch. The way things were, where everyone was nice in the YouTube comments section. Mm. When you use what all nice anyway. She's again wearing Never the same again. t-shirt that she had on last week, and if you missed that, then we thought it was put on to give a nod to young Nathan Drake in Uncharted 3. Not pulling that out of thin air, yeah, it has a reason, and Naughty Dog made both Uncharted and also The Last of Us games. Nothing but net. Now they're still pretty skeptical <laughs> over whether she's immune or not, and Ellie ends up having to go to the toilet. She's tossed a magazine, and in the game she ended up coming across some beauty posters, which she was completely stunned by. That girl is so skinny. Oh, I never did that part. I thought you had plenty of food in your time. Oh, we did. Some just chose not to eat it. This happened just before the <laughs> hotel, which we huh. ended up visiting in the game, though it appeared way later on. I think there was a scene that Neil Druckmann cut out where Ellie's taking a shit on the toilet and she's admiring the girls in the magazines. <laughs> going like, I want to I want to see that deleted scene. Like now I'm I'm really pining to see that. Like Whoa, now you're coming across like a pervert. No, that's I was I, saying I, you want to see that no, scene. I think I think Belly probably when I say Belly it's Bella Ramsey, <laughs> Bella, Bella and Ellie Belly. I think Belly <laughs> Someone is the, said that already. I, I probably somewhere, but <laughs> Belly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think she could deliver like really go into the bathroom because there were some non sayers saying she couldn't play Ellie the right way, but I think she could deliver like going to the bathroom like with convenience and doing it the right way. So I, I, I want to see her on, on a toilet in the magazine. Yeah, I, I want to see that. This is what we contribute to the yeah. Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> and the entire scene takes place in a beauty salon, which completely. F juxtaposing the idea of beauty against the devastation that the world's now in. We see Joel's hands trembling, which he diagnoses as a hairline fracture after mm. beating the crap out of the guy last week. Hands trembling are of course a sign of infection, and it's something that Tess later has, so you can see why she questions it here. When she returns, they end up eating, and Joel and Tess eat some crap bars, I think they're called crap bars, while Stelly has a delicious <laughs> chicken sandwich. This was given to her by Marlene, and it hints to how important she is since they're willing to give her what would be top of the range food in the apocalypse. Now tying back to the whole bread thing, it is possible that Ellie was given this because she's immune to cordyceps, and therefore mm. there's no risk of her getting infected. Good, Good point. point. Good point. <laughs> Damn. Because who knows what's in the crops, though that, that might be me going too far. Interestingly though, there was a real life case in France that happened in the 50s that could have inspired this. What? I've done a full in-depth breakdown on this in our video about how the infection started, which is up on the channel now. Now just for the cliff notes though, there was some ergot that ended up in bread, and this caused severe food poisoning and hallucinations. There was a man who thought he was an airplane, and he ended up jumping off a two-story balcony. Whoa. In episode 1, the scientists said that there could be LSD-like hallucinations given, and this could tie back to that. Now a child we get some also attempted to strangle their own mother, showing how it could affect someone's rage. All in all, 250 people were affected by it, and 50 of these were condemned to an asylum. It's a really interesting story, and like I say, I've done a longer video on it, but the important thing to take from it is no carbs till mobs. But I'm on Atkins. <laughs> Ellie says they're trying to get her to an outpost out west, and there's going to be doctors there who can help work on a cure. Joel really doesn't believe this at all, and we'll talk in our spoiler section at the end how this sets up what's to come. Tess just wants to finish the job, but she's starting to gain faith in Ellie, and we can see her coming around. If Ellie is indeed able to help with a cure, then that would make her one of the most important people that have ever lived, but it just so happens that she's been <sighs> slotted up with some, let's say, morally grey characters. Yeah. Joel shifts a cabinet out of the way of the door, and ah. often you drop these other ones when escaping in order to stop people or the infected coming after you. Yeah, cool. Speaking of the infected, I was sure I heard the sound effect of a clicker when they open up the door. So did I! Ever did it sound like that? <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> On the same page as you. Now, speaking of the game, they actually skip over a big section with the two skyscrapers. It was a bit yeah. gutted that we didn't get to this bit, as it's such a major part of the game early on. They also finished last week's episode by showing a shot of it to tease what was to come, and there's a clicker. Oh yeah, that's right. There was that moment that I saw it on TikTok. Yeah, where there's a clip right there yeah. on the bottom left there. This is the first time actually seeing it in the wide frame. Yeah. 
Oh, that is crazy. Yeah. People in our comments had yeah. said that, like, did you see the clicker? I'm it's, like, what are we're you guys? Are, at the buildings and the lights. You guys are making shit up. Yeah. There's no clicker there. Yeah. <laughs> but sure enough, there was a clicker. And while I know the skyscraper scene was a big part of, of the game, I really didn't even think about it until, like, you just reminded me about it right now. Were you consciously aware of it? I was. I mean, I played the game so many times. It, it, I mean, it was. I, it would have been cool to see. It, it didn't affect the, the storyline or the episode. It was more of like I was just more saddened just from a visual perspective. But from a storyline perspective, I didn't feel it hurt the episode. So I wasn't yeah. bothered in that sense. In the video game, we get to meet our first clicker in the, the skyscraper building. So I thought like that was a cool touch. Whereas in the episode, we get to see the clicker in the museum for the first time. They changed it up a little bit. But again, it doesn't like it didn't hurt the storyline. Well, what they expand on here, sometimes they have to cut out some other stuff. Exactly. Time for it. And we might get some other skyscraper scene later on. There's a little, in the game, there's a lot of skyscraper-related things you got to do. Now, as we see from the skyscrapers, uh, they'd probably be impossible to climb and descend in real life but due to the angle that they're at. In the game, he climbed up one and descended down the other during the night, and this was all done to escape the Fedra camp. As you made your way through, you came across fresh bodies and also encountered the clickers for the first time after seeing one grown into a wall. This is something that was teased out last week, and yes. one leaps out at you as you open a door, and you have to navigate past them as you make your way through the structure. Pain in the ass. I'm guessing that they <laughs> just wanted to have the one big clicker scene for the episode, and due to the budget, they probably thought that the museum later on would be the best place to do it. Yeah. This too yeah. is a location that features in the game as well, with the Civil War display being a major part that we'll get into. Now in the game you have to climb scaffolding, and due to one of the skyscrapers being at an angle, they do some really cool stuff with the physics. Eventually, you make your way through a train station in what's one of the tensest parts of the game before you finally part. escape downtown, which is where you're swarmed by the infected. This is an awesome scene, and they almost grab you from behind a shutter, and I had to hand <laughs> it to them. I love this moment. Now, in the show, they go the longer scenic route, and Ellie shows the reference. city for the first time, looking at the bombing and what the government tried to do in order to stop the spread. They hit most of the big cities like this. They had to slow the spread somehow. So what happened here? bomb the hell out of the surrounding areas to the quarantine zones, hoping to kill as much of the infected as possible. Uh, what the- Along the way, she walks past a stuffed giraffe toy, and these actually appeared throughout the game at several points. They showed up in Sarah's room, on the ground, and you'd often oh, find them I just lying did about not the place. see that. <laughs> oh, wow. Online, yeah. And we'll talk about it in that super spoiler section, 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 exclusive spoilers. Now here they make their way alongside a highway littered with cars, and I absolutely love the look here. Really recaptures the game, yes, yeah, turning this into an so. urban jungle where nature has taken over once more. Definitely. Ellie brings up how she got bit, and this happened in a mall inside the QZ. This all took place in the Left Behind DLC, and Ellie says that she was just in there alone, which, again, uh -huh. super spoiler section uh -huh. at the end. We'll also be discussing some of the infected that she talks about here, and I'm guessing that this is all setting up what's coming down the line. Anyway, after hearing the cry of the infected, they decide to head into the hotel. In the show, this happens much earlier than it does in the game, with it not appearing until the Pittsburgh chapter. They really managed to recapture the look of it, though, with the central oh, stairwell wow. and wow. flooding being present. In the game, you made your way behind the reception desk and could catch a bellboy trolley similar to what we see in the show. There's also a grand piano that makes an appearance, and it's here that Joel talks about his love for coffee. Ellie asks if they've ever stayed in a place like this, and Tess says, Did You ever stay in a place like this? for my blood. Ah, uh, no, a little out of our league. Now this is a nod to the line in the game, when they first enter the hotel. Too rich for my blood. Whoa, fancy. Uh, you ever stayed at a place like this? Before, to too rich for my too rich for my blood. I guess I, I remembered it. I guess. It. No, well, Good job, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Thank you. And it brought back PTSD flashbacks of all those wooden pallets. Oh, I wish they did that. <laughs> Never again. Um, just so it's out there, I can't swim. Well, I I don't know how to swim. Seriously. Can we have pools I love game? when they bag it's on each other. <laughs> and I think they've included this bit as a nod to the game, and that it's highly unlikely we'll be returning here again in the show. This kind of sucks, as it also has another big bit with the infected, but, you know, with the show changing some bits and adding in others, we, we might get a payoff similar to that. And they end up ascending, which is when Tess climbs through a gap in order to unlock a door for them. In the game, you grabbed a ladder and navigated your way up the building, which is where you encountered some bandits. There were other things that we ran into, which we'll save for later, in case they adapt it into a later part of the show. Mm -hmm. Either way, okay, cool. here they use the time for some character development, with Joel and Ellie being forced into an awkward conversation. 
Joel is clearly a closed book at this point and he lies about where he's from and won't even answer whether he and Tessa are an item. It's important to bear in mind that at this point in the story, Joel's pretty much just a shell of his former self and due to the death of Sarah, he refuses to get attached to anything. He knows the pain that comes from loss and his sole focus is on just making it through the day to day. Because of his past, he also knows that surviving means you have to do awful things and thus he doesn't really like to make alliances in case it comes to a point where it's him or them standing in the way of tomorrow. That's me and all my friendships. Brandishes her knife, it's true, guys. And this is the weapon that she uses throughout the game. Now, out on the hotel balcony, the group look out oh. and they see piles of infected. Here's where I'm looking for. They're towards. way more overpowered than what they are in the game, and we learn that they have an almost hive like mind due to the fungus connecting them. In the game, if you killed a group of them, that was it, and you were completely safe. However, here, even if you kill one, they have the ability to reach out and call in the cavalry. The fungi work like a connected so brain, weird. and from the vast strains that live underground, they're almost like telephone wires joining up the locations. Can you imagine if that's how it was in the game? Yeah. It would just be the scariest <laughs> shit in the world of like, this level's never gonna end! Not only that, you would run out of ammo <laughs> yeah. very, and weaponry very quickly. This was a really cool expansion. I was like, oh, wow, I've never thought about it like this, how the, the, the fungus can just attach to the, to the dead and then call out to the other ones and signal where they are. Because I remember in the game, they were attracted to noise, and then when a certain horde or a certain amount uh, were done, okay, now you just move on. But whenever like they got attacked by a certain group of uh, runners, clickers, or whatever, it's because they were attracted to the noise yeah. or they were already affecting that area. Well, I think using this fungi and hive mind way of communicating is stronger visually for a television series because it keeps that theme alive of that tethered viral uh, connection you know it has the virus element feel more contagious just with the fact that they do feel that much more connected in a, in a way that is non-human it adds to the tension like okay they might be safe for the moment but like another horde yeah. of can come at any moment so yeah. you never feel like they're they're safe if one dies somewhere it can signal the others and thus the survivors are constantly on the run trying to get away. In the show, killing an infected person doesn't mean you're out of danger, and I love this added dimension to them. Now this massive pile of infected could also tie in with episode 1. We of course open with a time jump by following a child trying to make their way to the QZ. They'd been with a larger group, and it's possible that these newly infected people here are where the kid broke off from. Now they also use the landscape to very much show the objective and where you need to head. Naughty Dog had some incredible level design, and throughout the game you'd often see where you needed to go, demonstrated by being yellow. Pittsburgh. In Boston they had the Golden Dome of the State Building constantly off in the background, which is something that the show also does too. Great I've capture. never been to Boston myself, but, but I've seen the Golden Dome in The Departed. Departed. And obviously it's a sign of status in that movie, so, Get this so right. yeah. The bit of info there. Haven't been, haven't been to Boston, but I've seen it. Just Departed. talking about this movie Five today too. on TripAdvisor. Now realizing they have no other way around, they go to the museum, which is ripped right out of the game. Oh. In there, there was a wooden beam that fell, blocking a doorway, similar to what happens later on when they get trapped. The game had this separating Joel from Tess and Ellie, and you had to navigate past clickers and the infected so, so you could catch back up to them. In it, you run into a Civil War display, which is something that also appears in the series as well. It was lined with cases that harbored old muskets and rifles, which are another thing that they perfectly bring across to the series. Oh. It was also an officer's uniform, and this appears in the lobby as they step inside. The building initially seems safe because the roots outside have rotted away, but the open door signals that something else is going on. They catch a staff member grown into the ground. There's also a recently killed soldier that has been ripped apart. Tess is optimistic that they were attacked outside and crawled in here to die, but all it does is signal that something else is in the building. Now for me, clickers were something that was gonna make or break the series. Normally in zombie stuff, you, you tend to get your typical grunt zombies, and it's rare that it goes beyond that outside of Resident Evil and Left 4 Ooh, Dead. Wow, wow. One of the big downsides of The Walking Dead is that they just kept the zombies and didn't really elevate things from there, so you had this repetitive enemy throughout. The clickers though, they add this new dimension, and playing those encounters for the first time in a dark room with headphones on was oh. absolutely terrifying. Yep. If you so much as made a sound, then they would spring out of the darkness and grab you, the worst thing is, is that they were one-hit kills. If you've seen the trailer, the third trailer, the one that we did a reaction to, in case you haven't played the game one, that 
creature that they tease at the end. That shit was is that scary. <laughs> when I play the game, I'm just like running like a madman, and I'm so scared the entire time. But they tease that they good. It's gonna be in the show, and that I cannot wait oh, to see. I'm so excited. They're gonna need a lot of fire for that creature. But yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. Yeah. On high difficulties, even opening your backpack around them could alert the clickers to your location. And every encounter was as intense as a camp. I never trip. opened the pack. I never pack played that high difficulty. Say that the show has managed to recapture the tense atmosphere of them, and I even found myself sitting in complete silence because of how nail biting it was. As they get through the door, the beams collapse, and even the shape of how it falls looks like how it is in the game. We see the mannequins in the display cases, and these add extra human shapes to the surroundings, really elevating the paranoia and fear in this scene. One appears behind a glass case. And I kind of got flashes of the T-Rex scene in Jurassic Park oh. where, when they're in the Jeep. Oh, yeah. The dinosaurs the yeah good, good catch. Very and true. It leads to a big fight with two whilst Ellie crawls the way out and Joel uses sound to distract them. Love that in shot. the game, you throw bottles and bricks, but he tips over a statue in order to draw one away. He's also able to keep his flashlight on. And in the game, absolutely none of the infected reacted to lights because the fungi just wow. didn't pick up on it. Joel manages to reunite with Ellie, but the clicker senses them after they step on broken glass. You had to be really careful when navigating around them, as there would often be piles on the floor that could alert them at any second. Anyway, they managed to take them down, but we later learn that Tess got bit during this. We're not sure exactly when this happens, but in the game, you find her pushed up against right the cabinet there, yeah. and have to save her, which is when I've always thought that it happens there. Agreed. Now, as yeah. they step outside and she sits down, we can also catch a blood stain on her coat. Ah, this is wow, bit, yes. My guess is that the clicker pulled back and then dribbled the blood from his bite onto her. Right, right. I gotta say, the fact that Tess was boss enough to get a clicker off of her, you know, like an infected's one thing. You mean a runner or a stalker, but then when you get to a clicker, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the more the more advanced Thank uh, you. they Thank are. You, dude, we will have common police yeah. off the technicalities. <laughs> exactly. I appreciate exactly. that. You're, you're welcome. But yeah, no, agreed with you, because the higher in the evolutionary uh, gene pool you go, the stronger they are, as, you, as the creature we didn't mention earlier. Obviously, we know that's the strongest, but right. yeah, yeah. But clickers are extremely powerful and strong, and you know if you don't have a shiv in the game, you're done. Yeah. You can't push that, that thing off. She gets infected in the game by a runner, but here the show's implying that she was able to get a clicker off of her. She's, she's been working is, at, she's been working that's, out. That's something that you shouldn't disregard that. I, th I think we need to thank Robert for that, for having those guys beat her up so much. She just got those workouts and she's like, yeah. you can handle a clicker. That's nothing. But that was also really interesting that he mentioned the T-Rex. I think if they wanted to hit us over the head, they would have had like, you know, some yeah. water with a cup and then just have it vibrating and then just change the clicker noise to a <laughs> <laughs> sounded just like you. <laughs> yeah, so was, just, you're, you're like perfect you're like gabriel luna and tommy yeah. the, you are the t-rex <laughs> like spot on ali walks past a plank and this scene is pulled directly from the game after escaping the museum they have to cross one and we get an almost identical shot ah. of that when she makes her way across the beam Tess clearly knows she's on borrowed time too and she wants them to see the positive news in her surviving the bite I like that they added that. Yeah. And we get this line pulled directly from the game. Is that everything you hoped for? Oh, is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. Jury's still out? <laughs> but man, you can't deny that view. But man, you can't deny that view. Hey, let's pick it up. Feeling something? I'd like that they added them looking at his watch. Where's that in the game? Oh, it's in the game, yeah. Now, Joel also looks longingly at his watch. This brief glance at it carries a lot of meaning, as it, of course, reminds him of Sarah. Mm -hmm. Ali sort of becomes a surrogate daughter to him, and it's almost like he has a moment remembering his whole life mm -hmm. before it all went to hell. This is a really important scene, as the watch, of course, broke when Sarah died. This was very much when the world ended as well, and time stopped for Joel in the exact same second that his watch broke. Anyway, they make their way into the building, with Joel still suspecting Ellie might not be the real deal. She has a bandage to cover her bite, and in the game, when you'd patch yourself up with a medikit, you could also uh -huh. see bandages like this over the wounds. <laughs> now, after <laughs> cool. arriving at the state building, they see a truck full of dead Firefly soldiers, and also, I think it's worth pointing out that Joel has an assault rifle. He didn't get that till the hospital. Whereas in the game, I, I always saw him as being more of a pistol and shotgun man for moving on. <laughs> now, on the way to the location, <laughs> you came enough. across a soldier with a Firefly log on his arm, and he had a note telling that they were going to look after the girl. Mm -hmm. Inside, they discover the dead, and we learn that one got bit, which led to everyone turning on each other. 
Tess is in this situation too, and after revealing her bite, they let her handle things on her own terms. Joel is actually a little bit apprehensive over this, and you can see as she comes towards him that he starts to step back. The scenes play out really similarly to the game, with us getting a few lines of dialogue that mirror each other here. Uh -oh. Maybe they, uh, maybe they had a map or uh, something to tell us where they Love were the going. I mean, one of them's got to have a map on them, right? Where was this lab of theirs? Where did Marlene say that she was taking? Out west. Ellie. Oh, she never said. She only mentioned that it was someplace out west. Uh, I don't know. Just west. Listen, I'm probably going to get some crap for this, but I'm going to say it. The one thing I definitively know so far, I preferred the test portrayal in the show over the game. Mm. Like, especially the actress's voice. It seems like, yeah, you're, you're the kind of woman I just... <laughs> not the, the test girl that, in, 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 in the game. I wouldn't mess with that version of test either. But this version of test, I'm like, yeah, you, you're like super intimidating right off the bat. <laughs> There's more of this like weight in history and, and the way her voice yeah. communicates. Just, just the voice alone. I actually preferred the interpretation that... I don't know the actress's name. Forget Anna it. Torv? Is nice. Good bring. Way to kind of bring it. Way to bring the A-game here. Yeah. Even just watching it back to back, I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely prefer the actress. I mean, she's fantastic. I don't know if I'm ready to say that. Yeah, she's ph phenomenal. I definitely like the relationship between her and Joel in the show a little bit better so far. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a fair point what you're saying. I, I don't think you deserve crap for that. I mean, everyone's allowed to have a, a version that they, they like. But we're, we're talking with fandoms. All we do is talk crap on each hey, other. Everyone, everyone we don't respect other other people's opinions <laughs> what <laughs> world are you with you make a fair point but again i like the relationship i like the history the sense of yeah. history and i like the romantic history that we feel between joel and tess and, and the tv show a, a lot better i like the chemistry with these two a lot as well fair enough you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> our luck had to run out sooner or later our luck had to run out sooner or later she's infected she's infected I was bitten an hour ago, and it's already worse. This is fucking real, Joel. This is real. She just looks so disturbed, doesn't she? <laughs> I uh, yeah. like that. Act the yeah, her facial expressions yeah. are phenomenal. After revealing her bite, we hear Fedra soldiers storming the area. Tess buys them some time to escape, and she stays behind to shoot it out with them, which is when she's eventually killed. Here, the infected are alerted, with them scrambling I from like the area before to swarm the yeah. state building. Tess tips over some explosive barrels and also some grenades so that she can take them all out. It's such a tense scene watching them close in as she struggles to spark up her life. Oh, that was so much tension. And her hands trembling because of the infection. Tess is then given the kiss of death Ugh. and she drops the ladder, taking them all out. Now in the game at this point, you descended into the subway station, which is where the Fedra followed you until Spores. you ran into some infected. They decided to cut their losses and leave and it led to you going further into the underground. Here though, I actually like the impact and the time that they give to Tess's death. Yeah. You didn't really get yeah, a moment exactly. to breathe originally, but I just love the devastation that kind of washes over this scene. Joel as always continues moving, but Ellie stays still, hit with the realization of just how quickly things can change in this world. Yep. See, that's one thing that the show is really taking advantage of is being willing to shift perspectives because like in the game, whenever you're playing as the character, you're only in their perspective. So it works in the game when Tess, this whole death scene actually happens off screen because you're still just playing as Joel and you're only locked. So you really feel like you're in that perspective and locked in as the player. Whereas in a show, it allows you the opportunity to shift perspectives and just focus on this is only Tess's scene at this moment, you know? Absolutely. And just really quickly, I love too that they changed instead of the Fedra coming in and then doing it off screen they had you know stalkers and runners and all that coming in and then we get a heroic sacrifice from Tess, and this was such a yeah. badass sacrifice. It's one of the True. most badass sacrifices ever. I had time to breathe on the moment, like just to feel it. It's a, it's a lot more gut. I mean, it's still sad in the game for sure, but this is a lot more gut wrenching mm -hmm. because again, you're just so invested in Tess at this point. It really is one of life and death, and it speaks to both their characters. In the game, Ellie would even press Joel to talk about Tess. And he'd refuse to because we don't talk about make Tess. Face up to what happened. It's a devastating way to end the episode with them now on the other side of the building and that golden dome hanging over them in the background. Now that takes us into the super spoiler, super duper, trademark, greatest of all time, spoiler section, exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. If you haven't played both <laughs> games, then duck out now and also please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. I love you. So we're allowed to talk spoilers now? <laughs> Link to larger parts of the game. 
Initially, when they talk about how the Fireflies are working on a cure, Joel says he's heard this a thousand times before, and he's extremely skeptical over it. Now, this could be the show setting up why he does what he does down the line, and Joel eventually gets Ellie to the Fireflies, but he learns that in order to make a cure, that Ellie has to die. Thus, he turns into Rambo and kills all the Fireflies and Surgeons before they can operate on her. This line here adds way to him not believing that it's worth sacrificing her for something that might not even work, and I appreciate that they added it in. In this scene, Joel also refuses to let her have a gun when she asks. This was mirrored in the game as well, and it was only after the hotel where she saved his life that he started to begin trusting her. Mm -hmm. Now, the draft toy was also a nice little touch too. The end of the first game has a major scene yeah. in it in which Joel and Ellie come across them, and it shows that though humanity is doomed, there is hope for the rest of the world. Nature and wildlife has flourished, and it's one of the most memorable moments in that first game. Now, in the PlayStation Classic when they're in the hotel, they get a letter and climb up, which is when they run into bandits before making it to an elevator shaft. Here, everything goes to hell, and Ellie and Joel are cut off from each other, which is when you descend into the basement, into what's one of the most scariest parts of the game. I'm hoping they yeah, have it really section, was. The stalkers. So and in it, Joel basically navigates through the basement in what's one of the most tensest scenes of all time. In these dark and dank corridors, you run into infected, and also a blood out, which Ellie touched upon earlier in the episode. She asked if rumours about the ones that threw toxic gas at people were true, and this is a reference to the giant infected that you run into in the game. The longer someone is infected, the longer they mutate, oh, and in The Last so of Us 2, you come across the Rat King. Oh, and oh that's the worst. The <laughs> Rat King. Zero for where it all went down, and on Seattle. the day it kicked off, they destroyed the stairwells and ended up locking the Everyone's doors. Everyone's favourite character. I know. have been down there for about uh, roughly 25 years. It was completely incredible how messed up he got. Oh. Now, they also have some neat little nods to The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. Butterflies went beyond appearing in Episode 1, and we could also on see one guitar. on Joel's yep. guitar, yep. and Ellie even got one as a tattoo. Yep. Huge shout out to Devony Maldonado for pointing out that the shirt Ellie wears in the second game is also the one that Joel's ah, No way. Why didn't I notice that? Wow. Ah. This was the next location where Joel and Ellie went to. We discover that Frank had left the Bill shirts. and that he's made his way to part of the town that Bill refused to venture to. However, he did in order to help Joel and Ellie, and they went into his school to get a military truck battery. This was in there, but they kept pushing through, and eventually found Frank's body, which is when they learned that he'd taken it. Frank had been bitten, so he'd taken his own life. It was pretty heartbreaking for Bill, even if he didn't show it. Now, judging by the trailers, it looks like they're changing things for next time, and we'll of course be back for that, so make sure you stay locked in. <laughs> As for my thoughts on the episode, I think it was handled really well, and these two entries have been the best video game adaptations that I've ever seen. Amen. They yeah. handle the tone and aesthetic of the Have game, and every character is really knocking it out of the park in terms of their delivery and actions. True. Plus, the clickers were great too, oh. and I love this trek through the landscape of an overgrown Boston that was full of danger. Now, I kind of wish they'd done the skyscraper a bit in live action, but I can understand why that probably wasn't achievable without yeah. completely blowing the budget. Yeah. There's also the hotel as well, it. which I hope wasn't the only time that it'll appear in the series because I both these locations be. had major moments with the infected that I think would translate so well to the show. I think we'll Have use those sequences in other ways. I was blown away by it. And I hope we get those bits, yeah? Fingers crossed we do. Now, obviously, I would love to hear your thoughts on the show, so make sure you comment yeah. below and let me know. I think you have to, like, use some... Like, they would cut out some of these tense sequences for the show because you have to use them a little more sparingly yeah. in uh, a show or else it could feel feel more repetitive in the show. That was, I mean, sometimes the complaint with Last of Us 2 for some, some players, even though I, I personally... You like prefer it more. that game yeah. <laughs> over part one. Gameplay wise, I agree, but story wise, first one for me. But specifically on the gameplay, some people thought like this gets a little repetitive after a while. On a show, it can feel that way. So I think a lot of these sequences that we love will just get like variations of that sort of more spread out throughout the show. Hopefully, that's just my hope. But anyway, that was another great breakdown. Paul, you did it. You nailed it. You nailed it, Paul. Constantly nailing it, becoming super successful, unbelievably filthy rich. <laughs> All righty, guys. Andrew, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Heavy spoilers. Go subscribe. Show his video some love as he's got more videos of Last of Us coming out that are more than just the breakdowns. All right, guys. We'll talk to you all soon. Check, keep a lookout for episode three reaction coming up in a, uh, six days. I did math right. Yeah. See you guys.